And welcome everybody to the George A. Kellner Squash Center inside the Ferris Athletic Center on the campus of Trinity College for this afternoon's huge squash matchup between the number three ranked Harvard University Crimson and the top ranked in the nation Trinity College Bantams. The Bantams, Michael Craig, so far this season for him, things have not been bad, playing majority of the season at the number four. Craig, the junior from Belfast, Northern Ireland, an anthropology major who attended high school at Campbell College. So far this season, 11 and one, has lost just the one match and is one and zero oh at the number three. This is just his second match this season at the number three. Craig, will be in the dark blue top with the white bottoms and Sean Hughes in, guess what, the crimson top with the white bottoms and the Harvard squash written across his back. As and the first point will go to Michael Craig. Sean Hughes asked for the let, did not get it. And if you couldn't tell, this match here this afternoon a great attendance already, and classes are just about getting out. So there's already at least about 100, maybe 150 people here. We expect at least another 200 more, if not a couple extra bodies here at the George A. Kellner Squash Center. And so Hughes now on the board. And it's 1-1 one, one here in game number one between into the body of Craig, but a good reaction play. Hughes lunges, keeps it alive as Bolt, trying to get advantage of the tee. And that was an interesting move by Hughes. Hughes threw his rack and it looked like he did it voluntarily and not due to any action from Michael Craig, so it's 2-1 in favor of Michael Craig. And a beautiful shot to the back corner by Craig, who takes a 3-1 advantage. A superb backhand smash by Michael Craig, and he's currently doubling up. Sean Hughes, 4-2, game number one. When you think of squash, you don't exactly think of rowdy crowds, but that's actually the case here. At Trinity College, it is the sport that is better attended than any other, especially in terms of size and capacity at the viewing venue. Good look by Hughes to the back near corner, but read well by Craig. I believe we'll get an update at the court six matchup in just a moment from Grace Metry, and that is a spectacular slice down to the far corner, and right now, well in control of the first game is Michael Craig, seven to three. Down the line, and the winner for Sean Hughes, four serving seven. And you just have to love officials. Right now, Craig is asking why Hughes didn't get called, and the official's first words out of his mouth were, that was a bad shot by you. Ooh, a perfect read by Michael Craig as Sean Hughes went to the near side wall. Craig went far, and it's eight serving four. Craig with control and momentum in this first game. Longest rally of the match thus far. Craig up 9-4 over Hughes in game number one. The lunge kept alive by Hughes, Craig faked the cut and tried to send it deep. 
The Bows, opportunity here for Craig. Hughes into the 10, game point, 10-4. And the crowd tells you who just took game number one. Michael Craig, 11-4 over Sean Hughes in game number one. <laughs> and the Trinity fans are chanting something that literally not even the Trinity fans agree with. Shaker in the blue top with the white bottom. Sherl with the crimson top and the white bottom. This is the match at number six. Shaker, the freshman from Tanta, Egypt, 8-0 on the season. Great reaction play there by Sherl. The other thing with the CSA officials here, the timing is a little bit quicker. Shaker owns the point, 7-9. As we are approaching game point there. And now it is game point, 10 serving seven, Shiro over Shaker. Shaker doing his best work to stay alive in game one. Great read by Sheryl and Shaker just gets there. Craig up two, nothing now. And Shaker, third of the way there. One game point saved. You are still looking at the second game point between Shaker and Sheryl. The bow shot retrieved well by Sherl, and then he gets a bad bounce to take game one, 11-8 in favor of the Crimson as they grab their first game win of the afternoon. Not enough muscle there. Hughes, a well-placed shot to the back wall. And it's back-to-back -back points for Sean Hughes. It's 2-2. Wedged into the corner, chance for Hughes. And that's three straight points. Sean Hughes taking a 3-2 lead in game two after dropping game one, 11-4. Now we have enough. Into the 10, make it five for Sean Hughes. And that's exactly what Craig was trying to do, those previous two points. That cut backhand just above the 10. And the streak of six in a row for Sean Hughes is by the wayside, but he's still doubling up Craig, 3-6. And a gorgeous play to the back wall by Sean Hughes, seven serving four. The two. Very good friends. Exchanging a couple of hugs during the introductions and as well as before the introductions. But right now, Sean Hughes on a roll. He is up 8-4. Craig, who went 3-0 last year in the Potter Trophy, an all-CSA first team, named CSA Championship MVP because he came up so big in that 5-4 matchup last year. Gets the point back, it's five serving eight. Craig down five eight here during this rally, make it six eight. A quick turn to the official by Sean Hughes, he gets the bad information, six eight. Ratcheting it up by a couple of degrees due to the higher attendance, but there's Hughes. Every time it seems like Craig is going to claw himself back 
into this second game. Hughes comes up with a quick point. It's a real backbreaker for Craig. In order to stay alive in this second game, down 6-9. Into the 10, it just caught the top. And it is game point for Sean Hughes, up 10-6. A big mountain to climb here for Craig, needing four straight, and he is going to jump off that cliff. Into the 10, 11-6. So we are knotted at a game apiece at both the number nine and the number three matchups. The Bantams taking both the first games of the three and nine, but then the Crimson coming back in those same matches. A three-time Egyptian national champion. Also won the 2014 Arabian title after finishing second in 2013 and 2012. As I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, he calls Tanta Egypt home. And he has just squared game two at threes. As I see Jenna Haley, the number six for the Trinity College Bantams, is watching this one. As there's just something else about the fans from Trinity. Craig just couldn't get to the back wall. I'm not sure what he's complaining about there. 2-0 Hughes has five different four-game wins and one five-game win, with four of those five coming right here at the number three. And you can hear from that yell, Craig upset with the play into the 10 again, 3-1. Quick little flick shot to the back corner by Craig, but Hughes doing a great job to cover the ground. And then he just slammed it up against the wall. An impossible retrieval for Craig, and Hughes has taken five of the first six points in this third game. Up 7-6 at championship court number one in that second game. Hughes, 7-1. The points just keep coming like an avalanche for Sean Hughes and Michael Craig just as powerless to stop it. Cheryl, a huge point to go up 9-8. Trying to go up two games to none over Zaid Shaker at the six. Still 9-8 here, latter stages of game two. Cheryl for the Crimson looking to go up two games to none. Shaker for the Bantams, an exquisite wedge shot into the corner, it's 9-9. Shaker gives away the point. Game point here in game two. Samuel Sherl up 10-9. And Sherl gets the point as Shaker puts it into the 10. And it's an 11-9 victory in game number two for Samuel Sherl. He's up two games to none. That massive cheer you just heard was Michael Craig has now scored four straight game point saves. However, he's only halfway up that massive mountain. It's 5-10 in game number three with Hughes just a point away from going up two games to one. Hughes has already left the box. And Craig has to watch it. He'll have about a minute and a half to 
compose himself. But game three goes to Hughes, 11-5. He has grabbed the last two games after dropping the first one, 11-4. It's been 11-6, 11-5 for Sean Hughes over Michael Craig. So a quick Good scoop forehand by Craig. And then just an abysmal backhand slice by Craig. 2 nothing Hughes. The main difference between these two combatants right now, Sean Hughes is not giving away any points whatsoever. And now Craig with a great bow shot off the wall, 1-2. Trying to get him under control and get him back into the box. Here though, game four, knotted at twos. Make that 3-2, Michael Craig. Wedge, but Craig got to it. Quick flick of the wrist and Michael Craig. Up 4-2. That lead at 3-2, just a point ago, was his first lead since the first game that he won 11-4. Craig a chance, the cut, and he'll get it. It was not a good shot by Hughes, and Craig took advantage, showed a hard forehand, and then sliced it into the corner. As the Trinity fans reminding Mr. Hughes of his first name. Hughes. 12-0 on the season, 10-0 at the number three. But down 2-6 after Michael Craig, who went down 2 to nothing to begin this fourth game, has now scored six straight. Bo's lob there. <gasps> it skipped off of the wedge. Back-to-back -back wedge shots by Sean Hughes. Stops the streak of seven in a row by Michael Craig. And Craig calls for the fans to make more noise, and they are more than happy to oblige. 8-3, Craig over Hughes. Game four, Hughes up two games to one. And right now on the court, on the screen for the Bantams, Michael Craig, the winner of last year's Potter Trophy MVP. Hughes can't get it. 9-3, Michael Craig. Great effort by Hughes. Oh, and then Craig gives up the point into the 10 for 9. What a change in momentum as Sean Hughes had to make a great shot to keep that point alive. Back-to-back -back points for Hughes, 5-9. Win and nodding this match at 2-2. There's the advance to the game point. Michael Craig looking to nod up the match at number three at two games apiece and send us to the fateful fifth game. Craig had given up on the point and then realized he could get to it. Can he get back into the point mentally? Yeah. 
there it is. Michael Craig takes the second game 11 to five and will go to a faithful fifth. Two games apiece between Sean Hughes and Michael Craig. Will Hughes stay perfect in his collegiate career or will Michael Craig stay perfect against the Harvard Crimson and improve to four and oh. Back Craig taking games one, and four, 11-4, 11-5. Sean Hughes taking the middle games, 11-6 and 11-5. None of the matches have gone final anywhere on the ladder. Not at the nine, not at the six, and definitely not here at the three. You're watching Trinity College Squash on NSN. Our cameraman and producer is Nate Mackey. I'm Jake Donnelly. Thank you for tuning in. Hughes has had just one five-game match this season. Now up 2 nothing. That five-game match was against Columbia. The number three, Sif Atia. Hughes lost the first game, 11-9. As Craig gets on the scoreboard here in this first game, one serving two. The point continues. Craig, the backhand, and Hughes into the top of the tin, and it's tied at twos. And we go to a fifth game at the number nine. The rowdiest squash fans in the country, easy, here at the George A. Kellner Squash Center. Now let's go Michael Chant for the Bantams, number three, Michael Craig. Craig, the forehand volley, Hughes with the retrieval. Couple of quick volleys, and Hughes, the quicker of the two. It's 3-2, Sean Hughes, here in this fifth game. And you saw that show of sportsmanship between the two, although, the fans didn't appreciate it, but it's 3-3. Neither Craig for the Bantams or Hughes for the Crimson giving an inch here in this faithful fifth game. He is just a spectacular player. That wedged and a point to Hughes, 4-3. Craig didn't expect that ball to come right back to the middle, but it caught the wedge in the corner. as Sam Sherl up 9-6 over Zaid Shaker. And Hughes with an overstroke, 4-4. Craig, the anthropology major, keeps it on the backhand on the far wall. Hughes switches it to the forehand. And that's going to be a point for Craig. 5-4. Again, Hughes looked for the body of Craig instead of trying to avoid him. And Craig takes a one-point lead. Hughes upset with the call, but it was a fairly easy one. Stays on the backhand. And we're going to switch it over as the point goes to Hughes here, 5-5. Five, five. Game point for Zaid Shaker at championship court number one, trying to extend this match down two games to none. Shaker was down 6-9 and has scored four straight points. Shaker with his right hand wrapped scores five straight points to take a 6-9 deficit and turn it into an 11-9 win as that will go to at least a fourth game. So still 5-5. Make it 6-5. It stayed low to the ground and Craig couldn't get there. The bow's read by Craig. Puts it away. A glorious Overhand, backhand slice to the corner. Six is up. Game five, 
between Hughes and Craig. Ooh, that's a tough call. Point to Sean Hughes. I thought that was the right call, too. I thought Craig could have played that earlier, put himself in a bad position. So 7-6, Hughes ahead. And then Hughes couldn't pull off the squash version of the Roger Federer. Hughes knew he mishit it the second he made contact, groaning right as the forehand came through the wheelhouse. 8-7, Michael Craig leads with the home crowd just about at the edge of their sanity. And I think you can tell who got that point, Craig. Up 9-7 over Sean Hughes. Game and match point coming up here between Michael Craig and Sean Hughes. Craig has never lost to the Crimson as the Bantam fans on their feet. Sean Hughes has never lost full stop. 26-0 in his career. Michael Craig looking to make it 26-1. Point, Sean Hughes, as he keeps his perfect career alive. Can Sean Hughes pick up two more points to extend this match? Michael Craig up 10-8, but Hughes serving 8-10. Looking to stay perfect in his career. Ooh, Michael Craig has to control his emotions. The official allowing the toss, but that's a quick point for Hughes. Nine, ten. Harry moment there for Hughes, but the match continues. The forehand cut, Hughes just gets to it. deep into the corner, but Hughes is there. Ten nine in game five. Craig looking to drop Hughes for the first time in his career. Alive. The forehand cut. As it should be the longest rally of the match. <laughs> Point! Game! Match! Michael Craig! <laughs> what a battle! between Michael Craig of the Bantams and Sean Hughes of the Crimson for the first time in the career of Sean Hughes. He walks out of the box in defeat. Michael Craig wins it. 11-4, 6-11, 5-11, 11-5, and 11-9. It is currently 5-5. In game four, with Zaid Shaker and Sam Sherrill, about as close as you can get, with the exception of the previous match we just saw. This one is in game four. Shaker looks like an entirely different player since about a 20 minute break to bandage up a blood blister that popped in the middle of game three. He came back after being down 
6-9 in game three. Won it 11-9. And Shaker doesn't agree with the let call, but they'll replay the point at 6-5. And another point to Shaker, 7-5. Shaker, if you're just joining us, the computer science major, a freshman out of Tanta, Egypt. Just 5'9", 145 pounds, but he is deadly quick. Doesn't matter on that point, as it goes to Sam Sherrill, 6'7". Shaker can't get the trick shot, 7-7. Seven, seven. A lot of contact right there. Shaker takes a bit of a dive. Or did his knee give away a little bit? Make that his calf is cramping up. It's already been an exciting day here in Hartford. And yet, only two matches have gone final. At the three and at the nine, Shaker back up trying to walk it off. And at the nine by Andrew Lee defeating Bradley Smith. <laughs> Sam Sherl had his hand up appealing that the ball had bounced twice, but the official with a quick nod in the negative. And so Shaker is up right now. The scoreboard says 9-8, but it should read 8-7, Shaker on top of Sherl. Another point to Shaker. Into the 10, 10-8. Ten We've had two matches thus far. They went to five games. We're one point away from making it three for three. A chance for Shaker. Shaker takes it, 11-8 in game four. Three matches here in Hartford, three five game matches back in a moment with the start of the number two match between Tommy Brownell and Taboki Mahalo. Cheryl took the first two games 11-8, 11-9, but then Shaker 11-9, 11-8. And it is going to be quite obvious when Shaker scores a point, you will hear a huge yell come from the fans here in the Crimson and Arya Man Attic for the Bantams. And Shaker crushes the point down the line, 2-0. Great lunge, but then Shaker with Sheryl down into the split, hops up 3-0. A good retrieval by Sheryl. won the U-17 United States Junior Open Championship. But a little bit too soft on that forehand scoop. Puts it in the 10. It's 5-1. Shaker all over the place right now. 6-1. Shaker planted his foot, and now he is cramped up for the second time in this match. He's been helped out by the trainer twice already. Shaker literally hopping on one foot. Ooh, let is the call. Shaker almost purposely didn't hit that ball. 
This is something else. Athleticism of the highest order. A let in the rest of the Bantam roster. That wasn't the fans, that was the Bantam roster just let out a groan. There's about five different members just off of the screen, including Rick Penders and Tom DeMolder. Into the tin there on a miss hit by Shaker. Cheryl maybe sensing a little bit of blood, 2-6. And that's going to be a point for Shaker. Two. Eight two. Shaker battling through the cramps. Still hobbled a bit. Looking to win the final three games of this five game match. The cut volley, 9-2. Great retrieval by Shaker. Shaker, the cut to the corner, Cheryl gets there. Too high from Shaker, 3-9. We got the number six for just the third time this season, 2-0 with two sweeps. Looking for a five game victory. Match point, 10-3, Shaker over Sherl. He dropped the first two, 11-8, 11-9, but has won the last two, 11-9, 11-8. And has a chance for victory here. Not on that point, 4-10. Shaker trying to fight off a blood blister and a calf cramp. Can he do it? Shaker wins it. Dropping the first two, 11-8, 11-9, but coming back, 11-9, 11-8, 11-5. -8, all three matches here this afternoon have gone to five games. All three matches have gone to the Trinity College Bantams. We last match coming off of a loss at St. Lawrence as the number two against Kareem Ibrahim. 11-5, 11-5, 6-11, 11-4. Here though, looking to take the first game at game point, 10-5. A gorgeous southpaw cut to the corner there by Brownell. The Bantam sweeping the first wave up 3-0 right now. And Mahalo takes the first game, 11-2. Seven. So. Point two, Brownell. The Bantam's perfect so far this season at 14 and 0. Top team in the nation, the Crimson at 11 and 1. Just that one loss against Columbia as Mahalo with just an outrageously good bow shot. 3-6. Wow, what a shot. 4-7. <laughs> At the conclusion of this game between Mahalo and Brownell. Mahalo wants the call. Our official debating, it goes to Brownell. Both shot picked up by Mahalo. And that's a point for the junior from Johannesburg, 5-8. Cheeky shot from Brownell. 
Mahalo lunges. That looked like a hard retrieval for Mahalo. It was a fantastic shot. And Timmy Brown now looking to even it up at a game apiece. In his two tries, 0-2 against the Bantams. Last year in the Potter Trophy, lost to Michael Craig at the number four. 11-4, 8-11, and 9-11 as Timmy Brownell does in fact square us at once, 1-1, one, one, as Brownell takes the second game, 11-2-7. So, 2-11-7. Bad bounce there, but Mahalo played it well. Wow, Some great retrievals. <laughs> that was a fantastic point. And it goes to Mahalo, 7-3. After dropping the first game, 12-14 to Adam Corcoran. He comes back to take the next one, 12-10. So the number eight is squared. Oh, Mahalo. Such a good shot. You saw Brownell tap his racket. Even he was appreciative of that shot. Right into the 10, Mahalo. Now up, two games to Gets one. it, so it's 8-8. Eight, eight. And we will, in fact, flip you over to Dingra in the white and DeMolder in the blue. Dingra trying to even the match at one game apiece. DeMolder trying to go up two games to none. Great switch by Dingra, but DeMolder just got there. Ooh, and the wedge shot by Dingra. Right into the near side corner, and Dingra has scored three in a row to turn a 6-8 deficit into a 9-8 lead. I told you, very contentious. Match is getting even more so here. The point to Dingra. And Dingra went nowhere close to a straight line to that one, and Tom DeMolder takes it to a game point at 10-9. Can Dingra hold off DeMolder in this hotly contested game two. A slice volley, well done by Dingra, but DeMolder was there. The drop, DeMolder, the return. Dingra made a little bit of contact with DeMolder, and the appeal is rejected. Dingra furious as he bangs the outside glass, but game two goes to DeMolder, 11-2-9. And a win down the forehand side by Mahalo as Brownell had read it wrong, all knotted at sevens now after falling behind two games to one. A beautiful slice by Brownell. 8-7 for the Crimson player. The lob stays in. Brownell, another point, give him a two-point cushion trying to force us to get another five-game match. Hollow did that little deke with the shoulder, but Brownell was just long enough. 
and Timmy Brownell. Game point here in game four. Saved by Mahalo, and the rally continues. Good look at game point number three for Timmy Brownell. Goes 0 for 3 as Taboki Mahalo rattles off three straight points. It's 10 10 in game four. Oh, the wedge slice by Timmy Brownell, and he bangs his chest as he has his fourth game point of game four. Brownell tried that cut slice again, and Mahalo into the 10. Game four goes to Timmy Brownell. And every single match between the Bantams and the Crimson thus far today will go to a decisive game five. DeMolder up 5-4. Dingra, great use of the back wall. Seems like every other stroke, both Dingra and DeMolder are going into each other. Dingra with a Quick jab step forward. The senior with a such a smooth move to get that one. The official couldn't see it. He put the right thigh ever so slightly forward, and it's 5-5. Five five. If they don't call it, it's not illegal. With the three wins in the first wave, as that's right back into the middle, Dingra's going to get called for the obstruction 7-5. That's a bad break for Dingra. Our, our first non-five-game victory for either side thus far. 9-5, DeMolder feeling it. Five straight, make that four straight points for the junior from Belgium. Dingra has to find some way to stop this momentum for DeMolder, and that's not going to be the way. Match point for Tom DeMolder. He has taken the first game, 11-5. The second game, 11-9. And is looking for an 11-5 victory here in game three. And there it is. Tom DeMolder defeats Madhav Dingra for the second time in his career. 11-5, 11-9, 11-5 in the Bantams. Now up, four games to none, and we'll flip it back over. Mahal, the junior economics major from Johannesburg, South Africa. A gorgeous stroke on the backhand and a quick point for Mahal. It's the third time we've seen him do that today, 5-3. What a shot. A winner right down the far wall on the back end for the lefty, 4-6. Brownell just gets to it. Corner to corner, can't do it. 9-5 to Boki Mahalo. Great cross court winner on the forehand. Into the 10, match point for Taboki Mahalo. Can Brownell save three? Or can Taboki Mahalo put him away? What a great reach by Brownell. Just inside the boundary. Mahalo.
Paolo goes for the cut. Not enough! And the junior from Johannesburg, South Africa defeats the sophomore from Belmont, Massachusetts and the Bantams for the fifth time in a row will defeat the Harvard University Crimson as they have taken a five to nothing lead thanks to the win at number two in five games for Toboki Mahalo.